Hi, and welcome back to the shop. I'm John Peters, and this bookcase is designed to be an introduction to woodworking project that will hopefully result in a beautiful and useful piece of furniture for your home. Throughout the project video, I'll do my best to answer any questions that may come up during your build and really help guide you through the project. I'll have a link to this project and all my other woodworking projects down in the description below. Let's get started on this bookcase by taking a look at the full-size drawing to come up with a cut list. Here's a closer look at the full-size drawing. The finished bookcase will be the exact width and height as this drawing. And if you think of most pieces of furniture or kitchen cabinets, they're basically boxes. And if you think of your project like that, it becomes a little bit easier to understand and maybe not as overwhelming. So in this case, we basically have two boxes, a lower box and an upper box. These are the bookshelves that make up the bookcase. They are also the main parts for this project, so these will be the first parts on the cut list. This first rip can be a little awkward because the plywood is heavy and difficult to handle. Because the finished cuts need to be 10 and 3 quarters, I'll make the first rip at 22 inches. This will allow me to readjust the fence and make the finished cuts when the plywood is lighter and easier to handle. Another option is to have these cuts made for you at the home store or lumber yard if that's available. Just remember to have these rips cut a little heavy so you can make a cleaner, more accurate cut when you get back to the shop. Now I've got the parts for the two boxes that will make up the bookcase cut to width. The next step is to use the miter saw and cut them to length. Again, I'm going to cut these parts a little heavy and I'll remember to keep track of the square finished cut. The finished cut side will go against the stop block when I cut the parts to size. Now I've got the parts for the two boxes that will make the bookcase cut to a rough length. And I've made sure to hang the finished cut off of my work table as a reminder that this is the side that goes against the stop block. Since I've got repetitive measurements, I'll set up a stop block so I only need to measure once and those parts will be the exact same length. For the long parts of the box, I'll measure and mark at 36 and a half. I'll set up a stop block and cut the four long parts to length. After cutting the long parts of the shelf to size, I'll readjust the stop block and cut the shorter side pieces to length. Now that I have the parts cut to size, I can make the boxes that will become the bookcase. I'll build the boxes by screwing through the shelves into the side pieces, and to do that, I'll need to pre-drill and countersink holes for the screws. I want to let you know that this year I'm having a Black Friday through Cyber Monday 4 for 40 sale on all my woodworking plans. That's four sets of plans for only $40. Just use coupon code 4 for 40 to get this discount. This sale starts now and ends Monday at midnight. I have a ton of great woodworking projects on my website, and they all have step-by-step -step video tutorials right here on YouTube designed to help guide you through the project. Everything from furniture builds like the bookcase that we're building right now to fun shop projects like the adjustable saw horses I built last year. So I hope that you'll click on the link in the description below and check out all of my woodworking project plans. I'm sure you'll find something there that will inspire you to spend more time in the shop. And I hope that everyone has a happy Thanksgiving and a nice relaxing weekend. To drill the holes, First, I'll measure in 3 8 of an inch, which is half the thickness of the 3 quarter inch plywood that I'm building the box with, and draw a line. Then I'll measure in from each edge and make a mark at 2 and at 2. These are the marks for pre-drilling and countersinking the holes. This is a pre-drill and countersink drill bit. The thinner drill bit will drill all the way through the material and the wider drill bit will countersink the hole. Notice that I have a piece of half inch MDF on my workbench. This will support the workpiece while I'm drilling the holes. 
It will also help to prevent tear out in the plywood from the drill bit. To build the boxes, I'll use a little wood glue and inch and a half screws. And to make it a little bit easier, I like to tack the parts in position with an inch and a quarter nail. And that keeps them from shifting around while I come back with the screw for a stronger joint. Making sure the parts are flush on the side and the top, I'll tack them together with an inch and a quarter nail. And it's helpful to use a clamp to hold the parts in position. Another advantage of using the MDF on your workbench is it allows you to easily move your project around without damaging it. Now that I have the boxes made, the next step is to attach them together. And I'll do that with six screws, two on each side and two in the center, screwing up from the bottom. I'll take the bottom box and flip it over to measure and mark to pre-drill and countersink the holes. Measuring in two inches from each side, I'll draw a line. Then pushing into the side, I'll make a mark at two on the front and back, and I'll do this on both sides, and in the center at 17 and a half. With the holes drilled, I'll clamp the cabinets in position, making sure that I'm flush at the front and the sides, and join the two cabinets together with inch and a quarter screws. Okay, and now you can see it's starting to look a bit like a bookcase. The next step is to beef up this front edge at the bottom here, I want it to be a full inch and a half thick, and I'll do that by ripping strips of three quarter inch plywood at one inch and attaching it to the bottom at the front and back of the cabinet. Making the filler strips like the ones I'm ripping right now is a good opportunity to use up some of those random pieces of plywood that will be hanging around the shop. It's important to always try to work in a comfortable position, so before I go any further, I'll move the bookcase to these shorter work platforms. After cutting the filler pieces to length, I'll attach them to the bottom of the cabinet with a little wood glue and inch and a quarter nails. Making sure the filler piece is flush with the front and side of the cabinet, I'll fire a nail about every eight to 10 inches. A little trick to getting those perfectly straight glue lines is use the side of your finger as a guide and squeeze the bottle at the same time.
I'll also add the same filler pieces to the sides of the cabinet and the center of the cabinet, evenly splitting the difference. These filler pieces will support the base of the cabinet that will be added further along in the project. Next, I'll build up the top of the cabinet by an inch and a quarter. That will support the face frame on the front of the bookcase and the flat panels that I'll eventually add to the sides. To do that, I'll use the table saw to rip strips of three quarter inch plywood at an inch and a quarter. After cutting these pieces to length, again, I'll attach them with a little wood glue and the nail gun. This time I've got inch and three quarter nails in the nail gun. And instead of nailing them like this, I'll hold the gun like this. And the reason for that is when the nail comes out of the gun, it's more likely to bend this way or that way. And by holding the gun in this position, you're less likely to get a blowout from the nail. I'm measuring in four inches on each side and I'll attach two support pieces. But before I attach these pieces, I'll drill three sixteenths of an inch holes about five and a half inches apart that I'll eventually use for attaching the solid wood top. Before permanently attaching the support pieces, I'll measure in from each side and make a mark at two and a half, two and a half, and drill a 3 16 of an inch hole in the center of both pieces. Next I'll use the same 3 16 of an inch drill bit to drill through the hole and through the top of the cabinet. Using a block of wood will help to prevent tear out from the drill bit. Now that I have the main part of the cabinet put together, the next step is to dress it up a bit with flat panels for the sides of the cabinet, a face frame at the front, and some decorative moldings. I'll get started by making the flat panels for the sides. Before ripping the parts to make the flat panels, I took a quick look around the shop and found these shorter boards for the four shorter parts. For the four longer parts, I've got another board here that measures just a little bit more than 60 inches. And instead of just ripping this board at two and a half inches, I'll cross cut it first because it's easier to get an accurate cut with a shorter board. After ripping the parts to width, I'll square up one side of each board and then set up a stop block and cut the parts to length.
Now I have the parts for the frames that will create the flat panels cut to size. And you'll notice that the frames will be a half inch deeper than the cabinet and that's to accommodate the back of the cabinet which will come along later in the project. Now there's a lot of different ways to make these frames. You can actually make the frames before attaching them to the sides of the cabinet. But I think the easiest way is to just use a little wood glue and nail the parts in place. I'm attaching the parts with inch and a quarter nails and at this moment I make a pretty big mistake. Instead of editing it out, I thought I'd share it with you so you don't make the same one. Okay, well, after all of that, I ended up making a really big mistake. I didn't account for the three quarter inch thickness of the face frame. I really needed to make this front piece here an inch and three quarters because an inch and three quarters and the three quarter inch thick face frame equals two and a half. So I ended up having to take off the front piece and the two shorter pieces, remill them, recut them to size and reattach them. On the plus side, it just goes to show that anyone can make mistakes and chances are you won't make this one since I made it and I'll have the correct measurements on the plans. The next step in this project is to cut the quarter inch plywood for the flat panels. I'll cut the quarter inch plywood panels a little smaller than the opening. Any gaps will be covered by the molding later on. After evenly spreading wood glue, I'll tack the panels in place with 3 quarter inch nails. I will be adding a little decorative molding to the flat panels, but before I do that, I want to mill and attach the face frame to the front. Now I have the parts for the face frame ripped and cut to a rough length. The vertical parts are referred to as styles, and the horizontal parts are referred to as rails. I'll cut the styles to length and attach them to the cabinet with wood glue and a few nails, and then I'll cut the rails to fit. I'm attaching the face frame with inch and three quarter nails. And it's always a good idea to remove the glue squeeze out with a wet rag before it has a chance to set up. With the styles attached, I'll cut the rails to fit and attach them next.
Okay, now you can see that the bookcase is really starting to take shape. And the next thing I'm going to do is make a little molding and trim out the flat panels. To get started on the molding, I'll rip strips of poplar at an inch and a quarter. Now that I have the poplar ripped at an inch and a quarter, I've raised the blade and set the angle of the saw at six degrees. I've readjusted the fence to just a little lighter than a quarter of an inch, and that will allow me to get two pieces of molding from each piece. After making the molding on the table saw, I'll cut a 45 degree angle on one side. Then hold the molding in place and make a mark for the second cut. When I'm trimming a flat panel, I like to start with the shorter pieces first. To attach the molding, I'll use a little wood glue and 3 quarter inch nails in the nail gun. Once the shorter pieces are attached, I'll cut the two long pieces to fit. Okay, well now I've got both flat panels trimmed out. And the next step is to add a little bead molding at the bottom of the bookcase. To get started on the molding, I'll rip a board at two inches. To make the bead molding, I'll use a bead molding bit in the router to cut the profile. With the edge of the board just off the table, I'll use the router to cut the profile. Back at the table saw with the molding against the fence, I've raised the blade, set the fence at 3 8 and next I'll resaw the board. By pushing the board halfway through and then flipping it over to complete the cut will allow me to keep my hands away from the blade. When I trim the bottom of the bookcase, I'll start on the left side and work my way around. After cutting the miter, I'll align the reveal in the molding and trace a line at the bottom.
With the bead molding attached, I'll add a filler piece to the back and to the two supports in the middle. Now that I have the bead molding attached, there's just one more piece of molding to add to the top of the bookcase, and I'll use a roundover bit in the router to make it. I've adjusted the height of the router bit to get this simple profile, and I'll cut the profile into the side of the board. The molding needs to be ripped at 3 8 and here I'm using a magnetic stop on my table saw so I can use the offcut for the molding. A push stick can have the tendency to slip off the rounded edge of the molding, so using the offcut with a stop is a safer alternative than setting the fence at 3 8 If you don't have a magnetic stop like the one I'm using here, you can also put a piece of tape on your table saw insert and set the fence so the offcut will be 3 8 and make a pencil mark on the piece of tape and then simply readjust the fence inward to make each cut. With the last piece of molding attached, I'll move on to the back of the bookcase. I'm using half inch birch plywood for the back and I'll use a circular saw to rough cut it to size. And make the finish cut on the table saw. Next, I'll measure and mark to evenly pre-drill and countersink holes in the back to attach it to the bookcase. Okay, and that was the last step in this part of the project. I'm not going to attach the back until the bookcase and the back are painted, just because it's gonna be much easier painting everything without the back attached. And I'm dividing this project into four main parts. The first part was building the bookcase. The next part will be building the base, then the top, and then the painting and finishing. Next, let's move on to making the base. The bookcase is going to sit on a base, and I'll make a frame for the base out of poplar, and then wrap it with sapele. Sapele is a beautiful wood, it has a really nice grain, and I'll also be making the top out of sapele, and it's kind of a nice way to tie the design together. To get started on the frame, I'll rip these poplar boards at 2 and 3 eighths. I've set up a stop block and I'll cut the long parts first. I've readjusted the stop block and I'll cut the short parts to size. Here are the parts to make up the frame, and I've measured in 12 and a half inches on each side and made a mark, and I make a little line like that, and that's to remind me that the board goes on this side of the line. I've already marked this side, and now I can take this board, make sure they're flush at the ends here, and just transfer those lines.
Now I can use a little wood glue and tack these parts together with inch and a half nails. Next, I'll pre-drill and countersink to add an inch and three-quarter screw in the center for a little more strength. I'll attach the base to the bookcase with pocket hole screws, so I'll need to drill a few pocket holes. I'll drill three on the outside of the back and three on the inside of the front. Now that I have the poplar frame for the base made, the next step is to cover the two sides and the front with sapili. I'll start by ripping the board at two and three eighths. To resaw the board, I've raised the blade just a little bit more than half the width of this board. I'll make one pass, then flip the board over and complete the cut. Now that I have the edge banding, or we could call this molding, made, I'm going to cover the two sides and the front of the base. You want to make a note of what is the front and what is the back of the base. The front of the base has the pocket holes drilled on the inside, and the back has the pocket holes drilled on the outside. So just keep in mind, and it will make sense when I attach the base to the cabinet. I'll attach the molding to the frame with a little wood glue and some nails. Now that I have the base finished, I'll move on to the top. And this is a one by eight by eight foot long Sapili board. And lumber's a little odd in that it's always described larger than what it actually is. So this is a one by eight, but it actually measures three quarters of an inch by seven and a quarter. So just keep that in mind. That's basically a rule of thumb with all dimensional lumber. The top I'm making needs to be 14 inches wide and 41 inches long. So I'm going to rough cut this board a little heavy and then I'll join the two boards together to make the top.
After cutting the boards to a rough length, I took a little bit off the inside edge of each board to get a nice tight seam when I joined the boards together. I'm going to use the biscuit joiner to join the boards together. and That just helps with alignment. And I like to measure in about six inches. I'll put the biscuits six inches from the edge because you don't want to be too close to the edge or you could cut into a biscuit when you're cutting the top to size. And then I'll put a biscuit maybe every 10 to 12 inches. After clamping the boards together, I'll let the glue set up overnight. The following day, I'll take the clamps off and cut the top to size. I'll take a little off each side to remove the marks or indentations left by the clamps. Now I can use my circular saw and a jig to take a little off each end and cut the top to length. Now I've got the top cut to size and I decided to make it 13 and a half inches wide. I thought that looked a little better than 14. And now I'm going to flip the top over and put a slight round over on the bottom side. And I'll use the same roundover bit to soften the edge at the bottom of the base. Okay, well that was the last step in the building part of the project. The next step is to paint the bookcase, add a little finish to the base and top, and then put all the parts together. To paint the bookcase, I'll start with a primer. This is Fresh Start by Benjamin Moore. This is a latex acrylic primer that will raise the wood grain and it will need to be sanded. Once the primer is dry, I'll fill the nail holes with joint compound. Let the joint compound dry and then sand the primer and the fill at the same time. After sanding the cabinet smooth, I'll apply another coat of the same primer and sand it again. The finished paint is Benjamin Moore's semi-gloss latex paint for trim and molding and the color is Dove White. I'll apply two coats allowing a few hours of dry time in between each coat. Moving on to the natural wood base and top, I'll start by filling the nail holes in the base. I'll lightly sand the base so the sawdust fills the nail holes. Next I'll drop a little CA glue in the sawdust filled hole. The glue and the sawdust will naturally mix and then I'll give it a light spray with the glue activator. After sanding the base and the top, starting with 120 sandpaper and finishing with 220 sandpaper, I'll apply the finish. The finish I'm using on this project is Waterlox and it's a wipe on varnish. If you're unable to find this product, you can also use Minwax wipe on polyurethane. I like to apply four coats, sanding in between coats with 320 sandpaper. I've allowed the paint and finish to cure for a few days and now I can assemble the parts. 
I'll start by attaching the base with one inch pocket hole screws. Notice there are two holes for the pocket hole screws. Turns out I put the round over on the wrong side of the base and had to redrill the holes. To attach the top, I'll place the top upside down and position the bookcase on top of it. I'll attach the top with four two and a half inch long cabinet screws, two on each side of the bookcase. Now that I have the base and the top attached to the bookcase, the last step is to attach the back with a few inch and a quarter screws. Okay, well, I'm real happy with the way the bookcase turned out. I actually finished that project a little while ago. I made that for my son, Jack, and I think it looks great. I like that painted white with natural wood, natural base. You probably know that by now. I do that uh, pretty often. The farmhouse desk that I finished just a few weeks ago, that's got the painted base and the reclaimed white oak top. It's just kind of a nice classy look. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoyed the, the kind of woodworking lesson format. This video is a long video and it's really designed for somebody who, who wants to get in the shop and actually wants woodworking lessons but might not want to go somewhere to take woodworking lessons. So let me know if you like this format and I'll make more videos like it. It's definitely a little bit more work but I do enjoy the teaching aspect of making videos like this. Also, I like making things that I think will last. You know, that bookcase, I fully anticipate somebody to be using 10, 20 years from now. I have no interest in making anything that I think is popular at the moment. So you're not gonna see any epoxy pour projects. I said it. I've been thinking it, but now I said it. So anyway, uh, that's it for now. I hope that you'll check out all my project plans down in the description below. That really helps me out. And all the plans do have step-by-step -step video tutorials right here on YouTube. As always, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.